as a Native American. We recognize that for generations and generations that this is where we, where we came from, our people. This is where my forefathers were. This is where they, they talked about sacredness. People have called the prairies and foothills of northern Colorado home for more than 12,000 years. The Lindenmeyer archaeological site bears witness to the Folsom Point makers and bee carvers who looked out over this landscape as we do today, as the Ute did, and the many plains tribes who lived here. Even though we're removed from that area. It does not really mean that you were cut off totally because the other part of us is uh, our thinking, our spiritual relationship with the land that used to be is still connected to that, that thinking part, the spiritual connection. The land and everything in it of it, above it, and below it is so essential that our languages and cultures were born from it. Everything is alive, full of spirit, sacred. You can picture yourself like standing here and looking out. You can hear people in the background or see people moving around. But they're spirit people. The land itself still is the same. It hasn't changed. And in our ceremonial circle, we always say that nothing gets old. It's always the same. Life is like it's a continuation of now. And that's where the connection is. That's why it's important to us Native Americans that you keep the landscape as it is because it has not yet told its story. It is still there. The sacredness has been here and it's going to remain here. Many peoples have known this land, its sounds and feelings familiar to them for countless generations. To these people, there were no lines drawn between them and the natural world in which they lived. Everything was sacred and connected in a web of meaning that will always be part of this land. Now when we walk the same ground, if we know how to look and to listen, we will feel the spirit of the land. Bringing back uh, the uh, sacredness, or bringing that over here onto this side, one has to move from our side to the center. And in our ceremonies, we always say that if you want to uh, adjust or to uh, connect with the past or with the spirit, you got to go halfway. Then it will come halfway too. Each time that you move toward it, it will move toward you. We find that if we go all the way, then it too comes all the way. Then you're there. And that's what we are trying to create. So now we have this place that we're gonna use as a place of getting together. Navachu. Navachu means together or meeting. Navachu. Mawisi. Navachu Mawisi means we are meeting in a center. In our language we say that. We can learn to care for this land as respectfully as all those who came before us. Touch it lightly so it may touch us deeply. It is no empty landscape, but rich in its past and with the promise of the future. My tribe, the Cheyennes, they had a lot of respect for the land and the elements, you know. Everything is sacred, the air the water, the land, the light. 
they didn't take it for granted. They didn't abuse it. They knew the importance, how important it was to them for their survival. You know, if it was, uh, if it was just uh, 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 a camp area, they, uh, they realized that the resources were limited. So they took only what they needed and they didn't destroy any of the, uh, any of the plant material or anything that they, uh, they, uh, they didn't overgraze. They didn't, they had a lot of, you know, they had respect because they knew they would use it again. It was a renewable resource. On high points with sweeping views, ridgelines where hunters waited for the herds and sheltered valleys where camps were made, the people left traces of their lives on the land. Stone circles, rock piles, tools. They are more than just relics of the past. They are sacred and still carry the spirit of their creators. Stone circles never touched that, never removed the rocks, because each one was placed by a person living hundreds of years ago. When they put that there, their mind was going, their spirit was moving, so they put it down. So you don't want to disturb that. It's connecting to something. So to remove that, you remove something. You don't know what you have taken out. Leave it alone. Like even uh, you find an uh, arrowhead. My people would tell me this. Don't pick it up. It doesn't belong to you. People are curious by nature, you know. And if they see something that's, that's, that doesn't, that, that is different, you know, they're going to pick it up and they're going to look at it and they're going to, they're going to want to know what it's about. You know, you have to almost educate people that are going to visit these sites as to what they should do when they come upon an artifact, is leave it in place. Finding an artifact is a thrilling moment, a sudden realization of those who were here before us, a connection across time. But if we take what we find, we break that connection forever and rob future generations of this most human experience. You must respect these people because they're still there. Like if I left certain things and say, okay, I'm going to put this here, I'm still there with that, with that object, whatever I leave. I could leave something there for two, three hundred years. It doesn't mean I, I left it there forever. It means I have to come back. They have to come back in a spirit form. It's important that uh, we respect the feelings of the people of the past rather than calling them dead. It's not a museum where you put objects and say, this was theirs, this is theirs. You have to look at it that way, this is theirs. All things have to be that way. That's why it's important that we connect to these places. The people in the land are two ends of a long piece of cloth that join to make a circle. When we connect, we remember that we are still part of what made us what we are. Coming out here, I uh, make an offering. My offering is to uh, the spirit, the spirit of the land. The uh, spirit that made people move, the spirit that made all things what it is at that time so that uh, it can preserve or hold on to what is here so when people come here that spirit will be there and it can connect to us it can make us feel different it can uh, give us uh, the feeling of being at ease the visitors to these places has to go with an idea that they were going to connect to something that's sacred. And uh, it's not going to be like 
just walk you through there because once we just walk through there, you're not going to feel anything unless you are set in your mind that you are going to feel something, that you're open. One has to have an open mind and uh, put away your biases in order to learn that. That's what blocks us, our biases. One day we're going to have to move this way and say, okay, I'm, I'm here to learn. What's going to open a door to your spirit or your heart? You're the one that's going to open it. Nobody else going to do that. We are all at the same place. How close can you get to how the original world, how this world was at that time? We are there.